Hi there, my name is Brian Clyer, and several of you have uh, messaged me, uh, left some comments on how I pretty much put together the egg crate displays. Now these uh, egg crate displays, uh, you can get them from Public Surplus of Nebraska, and you can get them uh, for $75 a piece, and I opted to get two of the displays because I wanted to make primarily a countdown timer, kind of a, kind of like a classic concentration. Uh, you see it like on the race game um, on the Price is Right. So that's that was the project. That was pretty based on a video that I saw on, on YouTube. There was one single video that was highlighting these displays, and I saw it and noticed that the pinout on the back uh, looked like it was doable for me for for uh, from an electronic standpoint. So I decided to give it a try, and uh, let me give you a little bit of tour of the components that I used. So here's the components at work. Obviously, you've seen the, uh, the egg crate displays. Some minor differences on the two that I received, but the functionality is the same. So let's start. Um, I got off of Amazon one of these 12 volt, 150 watt LED power supplies. Essentially, it's 120 volts input. It does not come with a plug, so you'll have to supply your own plug to plug into AC. And it'll output two cables that are capable of 150 watts total. Coming out of the power supply, I've broken out the 12 volts and ground to a little terminal strip, which then takes 12 volts and puts it into the primary driver here for the egg crate displays, which is a boost converter. You can buy these off of Amazon as well, and pretty much what it's doing here is it's taking 12 volts in and putting 28 volts DC out. And you can make an adjustment for the output of the DC by turning that little uh, screw on that potentiometer there. So I've got two of those to drive each display at 28 volts. In addition, coming out of 12 volts, I have 12 volts going into this relay board right here. And uh, the 12 volts actually goes in to the terminal on the bottom there. The 12 volts is needed to trigger these relays and these particular relay boards also have a little power supply that will output 5 volts, which is perfect because 5 volts is needed to power the ESP8266 microcontroller, which is right there. You can buy these. You can get a pair of these actually for about $10 on Amazon. They're dirt cheap and they're excellent for programming projects such as this. Out of the back of each egg crate display, I have a Molex connector with pins coming off of it. There's 12 pins in total, and there's a pin for each digit, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, and then I have a 28 volt pin. 28 volts is actually applied to one pin on each display, and the ground is the remainder of the pins. So you basically select which pin you want to be ground, and then that particular digit lights up. These displays also have the dollar sign, but since I'm limited on my inputs, I am unable to use the dollar sign in my implementation here. So one of the base problems is the lack of input-output pins on these ESP8266 microcontrollers. Basically, by the time you're done ignoring the pins that can't be used for this reason or that, for flashing, uh, for pins that uh, will prevent it from booting up if you hold it low or high, you're basically left with 10 usable pins. Which is a problem, because like I mentioned before, we've got way more pins than that here. So I was able to solve the problem by using a CD4028 integrated circuit. Two of them, in fact, one for each display. These integrated circuits, what they do is they convert binary coded decimal, or, or BCD, it converts it to decimal. So in other words, I can, with four pins, uh, maybe, uh, you know, 0001, for example, if one pin is set on and the rest of the pins are set off, that can actually convert to a specific decimal digit, such as four or seven, for example, and that will connect up to the relay board to actually trigger that particular relay for that digit. With a different design you can actually not have to use these CD4028 chips. If you have an add-on 
board for the controller that allows you more input and outputs. That would also allow you to get your dollar sign if you needed it as well. A little bit more about the ESP8266 microcontroller chip. It is indeed a microcontroller and it has a Wi-Fi interface built in and built onto it. So this can connect up to your home Wi-Fi and you have access through a web page to get to this particular controller. I have this controller loaded with an operating system called Annex Basic, which is very similar to the basic you might have used back in your younger days, like QBasic, for example, or Visual Basic. And using that language, you can create pretty much whatever programs that you want to. You can trigger these I.O. pins however you want to. And um, let me show you a little bit about the program that I've created. So I flashed the ESP8266, like I said, with the Annex Basic system. That's a simple program. It takes about uh, one or two minutes to flash to that operating system. And then you are given a website that allows you to actually make the changes. It's actually an interpreter, and it's actually built on to the chip. Very simple. So what you're looking at is actually uh, pieces of my program here that I've written. I'll just kind of scroll through it so you kind of get a sense. I'm some, configuring some pins. Here you can see which pins, GPIO pins, that I'm using for the tens digit and the ones digit. And I'm also using two of the pins on the controller to provide five volts for the BCD chip. Basically, I'm doing that because if you don't provide voltage for the BCD chip, the display doesn't turn on. That becomes useful because that allows us a control to turn the egg crate display each individual digit on or off for certain situations. So I'll continue to kind of scroll through that. The program will start with the clock at 00, zero in addition to keeping the display power off on it. Got some logic in here to allow password protection for the web page. I'll go into a little bit more and I'll probably post a link to the source code for this as well if you'd like to look at it. So I've got some instructions built into this program to allow a countdown and count up timer. Uh, allows you to, of course, stop the clock to flash the digits of the display and then to stop the flashing of the display and then a little bit of logic to turn the egg crate display on and off and here's the pretty much the logic to display a particular number number to display being the variable you just simply put in a number like 46 and this will separate out the number 46 into a tens digit and a ones digit. And then it pretty much tells the controller, here's the pins that we need to set to an on state or an off state. And this is fed into that integrated circuit, that CD4028 that I showed you before. And then, of course, that BCD chip will signal a particular decimal digit, such as 4 or 7 or 9 or whatever digit that you want to display. That's how it actually outputs. That's how the conversion is done. Obviously, there's a 10 number and a 1's number. And that is pretty much how, it done, how it's done. So let me show you a little bit about how this works in real life. So here's the main web interface for the program. If you do have any comments, by the way, you can reach me at that particular email address. Or if you have any questions. So, like I mentioned, when you first initialize the program, the actual display is shut off and the clock is set to zero, zero. If I push the display on button, you'll notice that I have a zero for the time. I should have men mentioned as well in the program, I have a variable that is set to whether or not I want to display zero in that tens digit or not if the tens digit is zero. So this allows me to set that uh, basically have the clock display 00, 0, 0, 08, 0, 09, or if I just want to get rid of that first digit altogether. Right now, I am not showing that first digit if it happens to be 0, so that's why you're not seeing a double 0 there. So there's boxes. I can literally set the timer however I want to set it. Let me set it to 24 seconds and hit set. There's 24. And I've got buttons to start down, 
start the countdown up, stop the timer, flash the display, and stop flashing the display, and then, like I mentioned before, the on and off for the actual display. So here's what the flash functionality does. And I'll stop the flashing. Obviously your count down and count up are self-explanatory. I can actually start the clock back up and keep, keep it going up and down as long as I push the correct button here. And I can stop it. And I can turn it off, I can turn it back on, I can flash it, and I can stop it. That is pretty much the functionality that is in the, uh, the Egg Crate Display program that I've made so far. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or drop me a comment on the YouTube video here. One more thing I should mention before leaving here is I do have a rudimentary API that I've programmed in here, and you can send HTTP requests to the microcontroller to have it turn the display on and off, or start, or you just set the timer at a certain number and start it up and down. So I'm just gonna demonstrate by using URLs here. So there's the display on. Set. 78 and we send the command start down like that and that will start the countdown so you can create your own programs games and uh, whatever else and you can actually use this API to incorporate the egg crate display in your games, which makes it far more useful than having to sit with a particular web interface and having somebody use it. This can be almost completely automatic as long as you've programmed a game to take advantage of that API. Again, let me know if you have any questions or comments.